Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and today I'm going to make a quick and easy Easter card using a stamp set and the stencil that I designed for the latest not too shabby box of the month. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. On the first of the month, I participated in the box of the month hop for Not Too Shabby. It is under the hashtag, hashtag N2S Spring Things. And on a side note, they did announce the winner the other day on their community tab. So I do have the channel linked below. Make sure to check that out and see if you were the lucky winner. But in that video, I used the stencil that I'll be sharing today, which I created for the kit. And I used the tulips to create a mini slimline. Today, I will be using the other half of the stencil, which are Easter eggs. If you look on the back of your stencil packaging, it gives you different ideas of how you can use those. You can just use the solid eggs, you can just use the patterned eggs, or you can layer the inks together so that you get kind of a lighter background and a darker pattern. The other items that I'll be using from the kit is the adorable all ear stamp set where you have these little gnome bunnies. And I'll probably be adding some sparkle with the Tinkerbell sequin mix that came in the kit. As of the time I'm recording this video, there are only a few full boxes of the month left and a handful of my stencils. So if you're interested in picking up either one of these, I do have links to the full kit where you can also sign up to get it monthly and the stencil in the description box below. As I start the process, I will tell you about any other products or tools that I use, but as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to be getting started today by ink blending the scenery for the background on my card. I am making a mask using this grass border die and a piece of masking paper. Now this, after I die cut it, does give me two pieces and I'm going to start out by using kind of the negative or the outer edge of what I cut. Once the grass mask is in place, I use the green ink and making sure not to go above where my masking tape is, I do some ink blending at the bottom. Once I think I have enough of a layer there, I then move my mask down just for kind of a second row of grass, just to give it a little bit more depth and texture. The next thing I want to do is stencil my eggs and I want them to look like they are behind the grass. So I bring in the positive part from the piece I cut earlier and I lay that on top of where the grass is currently ink blended. You'll see here after I get my solid eggs in place and flip it over, I did have to reinforce the masking tape with some blue painters tape like the stencil. It had lost all of its stickiness on my dirty die cutting plates. Once so that egg stencil is in place, I bring in a couple sticky notes and I place these across the top of the stencil just so I don't get the colored ink on the background where later I'll be making some clouds. I don't have to put these on the bottom portion because it already has that masking paper there. 
I get started blending my eggs from left to right. I go light purple, light pink, and light yellow. Unfortunately, my purple ink pad is super dry, so I had to go over that quite a few times. But once I had gotten to a shade where I thought would work, I moved on to my pink and then on to my yellow. After I did a new color, I did come back in with the previous color brush and tried to help um, kind of blend those together, make them flow a little bit more. Once I had that first row of ink done, I pulled off my stencil and then moved it up a little bit and lined up the decorative eggs as best as I could with the previous row. I'm going to be using the same colors in the same order across that for the decorative part, but while I do that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today, I would love to know, have you ever combined stenciling and masking? If you have, or even if you haven't, let me know in that comment section below. And don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know you've answered and would like me to see it. For myself, I have only masked with stencils a couple times, and I think this is my first one where I used masking paper or masking tape. In the past, I have used other masking stencils, like if it was an oval mask for the center or a rectangle mask for the center, but never with this tape, and I really do like how it turned out. Here's a look at the grass and the eggs completely stenciled. Next, I want to ink blend my sky with a cloud edger stencil, but to avoid getting any blue ink onto my row of eggs, I got out just a piece of that masking paper and I cleaned off my brushes using the stencil. This way I have a very faint outline and I took that piece off screen and carefully just cut out around the top edge of the eggs and then I used this as a mask while I created the first kind of row of blue for my sky. Once I had the shaded area at the bottom, I brought in my cloud edger stencil and created a sky. Now for this, I did start at the top and each time I would move my stencil, I would ink blend the ink from the stencil up. So I didn't go from the top of the cardstock down to that because you'll see when I go to do the following layers, I don't quite go up to where my last border was and then it gives it kind of a cloud effect. Now it's time to stamp my image and my sentiments. I decided to go with three of the sentiments and the little bunny sitting on the egg in the lower right hand corner. I am stamping this onto a scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth because later I will be coloring in my bunny with some Zig Clean Color Markers and this is what I have found works best for me. Because these are new stamps, I do ink them up and stamp them twice and in this case I am using VersaFine Onyx Black for my image and sentiments. Using my background piece for color inspiration, off camera I got out some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers and I will tell you each of the numbers in the description box below. Now if you've been around my channel long or lately, you know that I have really gotten into what I call selective coloring. I want to use those image stamps I have, but trying to color them in, you know, with all the shading completely overwhelms me a little bit. So I usually pick areas of the images and just use limited colors. For this one, I started with the flower, which I knew I wanted the center to be yellow and the petals to be pink. And I did very basic coloring with the markers. For me, I usually like to blend with the colorless blender that Zig also makes. I just wanted to give you a little peek of how I get started, but I did end up coloring the rest of the image off camera. And I also ran this through my brother scan and cut to get it die cut with a nice white border. Speaking of die cutting, I did have to do a little bit more before I could assemble the card. Off camera, I used two nesting rectangles, one to cut out the center of the ink blended panel and the other to make a black cardstock mat for that piece. 
Now all of the pieces are ready so I can make the card. I have a top fold card base here and I'm going to start by adding adhesive to the back of the frame and placing it flat down onto the front of the card. This does fill it completely. Next I added the black mat to the center shaded piece and then I popped this up with some foam tape over that center opening. Once that was in place, I spent a little bit of time figuring out where I wanted my image and sentiment strips to go, and then I used foam dimensionals and just my regular ATG tape to get everything adhered to the card front. Now, what I really liked about this center being popped up is that not only is there added dimension there, but because some of the pieces hang off the edge, it adds just a little bit more interest to the card. Now, you know me, I had to add some bling, so I did use some of the smallest sequins from the package that came with the kit, and I arranged five of them going from the top left to the lower right on the card front and then adhered them each down on a glue dot. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.